Please make welcome, if you will, one of the top portrait artists in the world today, Mr. Harley Brown. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. I had this really long introduction written out with all your accolades, but I thought this might be you know, oh. simpler, more to the point. Well, they, they can. The books can speak for themselves. OK. Well, should I interview the books? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, when I, I wanted to, it, with these books, this one here, uh, I did a few years ago. And uh, I had a, several boxes that I threw together and took him up to Lou Lehrman up in Scottsdale and said, go for it. And he weaned out all of, all of my words, but he figured out, OK, this is superfluous, this and that and so on. This next book, but this here has all of my ideas about art, virtually, about how to be an artist, this and that and the other, the, some of the secrets, so-called secrets. But this one here, I, the publisher said, we want you to do a book called Confessions. I want you to confess everything. And I thought, well, there's, there's a lot of confessing <laughs> to do. And, and I you, asked. You didn't, you didn't have to take them literally, you know. Well, it, in fact, I did. Uh, I thought, you know, all these books that you glorify yourself, that I did this and I went there and I met the queen and all that. <laughs> Bunk them, you know. Who wants to read that? And so I said to Carol, my darling wife, what should I say? And she says, let it all out. And she says, it's your book, everything, doesn't matter. So I let everything out on being an artist. And you, you read it yourself. He, this gentleman here is studying for his uh, doctorate or whatever. And he <laughs> squeezed my book in somehow, cluttered his mind up with it. I <laughs> failed my test last week. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, shoot away, lay it on. Well, let's, uh, let's start uh, kind of at the beginning, uh, and let's start with the beginning of a painting. And Jason, we'll go ahead oh. and uh, jump into these images, and uh, we have armed you with this highly dangerous weapon, so be careful. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the crossfire here. But uh, since we do have so many artists here, I thought we might, maybe we could start with, uh, with this particular sequence, and it shows the creation of one of your paintings, one of your yeah. pastel paintings. Um, and uh, this is in the Confessions book, and uh, shows 12 steps of the creation of a painting. And uh, I was talking with Harley about this yesterday. Uh, in, in the book, he actually interviews himself. And uh, Harley asks the question, and then Harley answers. And uh, does a much better job than I will do today. So get the book, and you can read the real interview. But uh, um, one of the things we talked about yesterday was he talked about if he has any success as an artist, it is because of his ability to draw. And I said, OK, well, that makes sense. I've heard that from a lot of artists I've interviewed. You know, their, their basis of great art is drawing. And uh, I've learned to draw, and therefore, you know, I think I can make reasonably good art. And uh, so I start looking through these pictures, and, and here's the start of a painting. Um, you know, uh, he's drawing. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, you know, 99% of the world, if you hand them a piece of paper and said, OK, draw me a portrait, they start to make a nice big oval. That's the face, and then they start putting the eyes and so on. And then, well, not Harley. This is where he starts. So you pick it up from there and take us through these images, if you would. Did you ever see that Jackie Gleason show where he invented a thing for the kitchen, he and Carney? And they had to do a TV ad. Yes. And, and Gleason got his hat, you know, the chef's hat on, and they took him into the studio, and the camera was standing out there and Gleason was all ready, you know, uh, to make a spiel about this. And the camera was aimed at him and the guy said, now look right into that camera, there's five million people watching you. <laughs> and all of a sudden Gleason went, humma, 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 humma. <laughs> well, I'm looking at all these faces here, <laughs> not just a, a lens. And I'm gonna, uh, but I'm gonna just pretend that there's we're all friends, and that this is, you're all relatives, and we're here for the, uh, my first, actually, I was going to say one quick thing. This is my first time, Carol and my first time west or east of Denver in our lives. Wow. East of Denver. Wow. Other than right here. <laughs> Drawing is, to me, the basis of it all. Not color, necessarily. Nothing else really comes up to drawing, and I'll tell you why. Now, I started here with a blank, right over here. 
Then I did this, then I erased it. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's for this side, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That really is drawing, and drawing to me, and it took me years to figure this out, drawing is not just doing a circle and doing this and that and the other thing. Drawing is the most important thing in art, and it's the first word that came from a professor's mouth when I went to college, observation. When I'm drawing, I'm observing. I'm looking at more at the model than I am at my paper, and you observe. When you look up here, you know what that is. Everybody here know what that is? That's a set of lips? Yeah. A smart guy. There's a smart, always a smart guy in the crowd. <laughs> well, by itself, by itself, nobody knows what it is, but in relation to other things. Now watch what happens when I put it in relation to other things. That's what art is, relating it to other things. And it's drawing, it's observation. When you look here, let's see, let's see, here's a good face. No, not me. Put your, put your, nah, that's not going to work. His face isn't going to work. <laughs> uh, let's just go to the next slide. Right? This is important. How is the light on me? Come here. Look at that eye. Lower your head a bit. There we go. Yeah. Look at the shadows in there. The lights and the darks. That's not an eyebrow and eyes and lids and ball, eyeballs and so on and so forth and lashes. That's shapes. If you start to understand shapes, there's nothing you can't draw. I promise you from this minute on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we go on to the next one and you'll see in relation. Okay, there's the other eye, the socket. Very loosely done, but accurate. Accurate is not a bad word in art. It's not. Passionate accuracy with a flair. But if you get sloppy at first when you're drawing, no matter what it is, a tree, a face, a dog, doesn't matter. If you get sloppy in the beginning, the whole painting will start to go downhill. I've witnessed that with myself and I've witnessed that with students for decades. Then the next step, I measure out how far down does the nose go from up there? Well, this is about halfway right here. So I measure from there to there with the model and I know that the nose down there is the same distance from the upper there to there, down to there. Every artist that I've ever seen in my entire life, there's no exception, and I can name the names, but I don't want to bore you with them. All professionals, every one of them measures. Now, I know there's uh, um, projectors, and there's this, and there's that, and the other thing, and that's fine. We just can't, they're part of our new world. But when you're drawing from life, and you should, you've got to measure. And if you guess at it, it will always be wrong. That's just the nature of the beast. So we go down to the nose. Okay, where's the next? Then I show that little bit of, there we are. I'm starting to show a little bit of shape. See, in the, in the eye, the, in the mouth, just shaping in the mouth very generally. Then putting in a little bit of tone with the nose. And I noticed that in the east, in the eastern seaboard, artists tend to tone down the nose a little bit more so they can put that lovely little shine on the end of it. And that's, I don't know if that's the, uh, the different academies in the east that have promoted that, but it's the way, it, and it's, it's terrific, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, okay, we go on to the next. Very loosely, a little more shape, a little more shadow, bringing in the cheek. See that whole area right in there? That's the light and that's the shadow. Thinking of a box turning the light. A little bit of light on this side. Don't overdo lights and don't overdo highlights. Big mistake. 
showing a little bit of background there. I start to do the background while I'm doing the foreground. Everything is abstract. That's where abstract does come into art. Every shape is sort of an abstract, the fun of, of juxtaposing one shape against the other, one value against the other. Here's another promise for you. If you understand values and you understand shapes, I guarantee you 100% that your color will start to become dramatic and no matter what colors you put in, they'll be right. Isn't that strange? There are certain theories in color, but the people that mess up in color are the ones where they're just kind of throwing in greens and a bit of purple there and this and that. You really have to base your painting upon something. Shapes, uh, values, and the colors will eventually come. Don't do colors before shapes. I learned tones first, and now I'll put in any kind of color into the painting that I'm doing, and it looks right for some crazy reason. Okay? A little more, chopping it in. You see how I chop it in there? Rose Weasel is her name. Great, wonderful lady that lived up near Calgary, Alberta. Always happy. Always had a good word for you. Very imposing. She was a matriarch, and everybody loved her and listened to her. Rose Weasel. Uh, see how all these shapes are starting to come in? Those only start to happen after you do a lot of the action of drawing gets you into the abstract. And drawing from life, drawing from life. If you always work from photographs, you'll always be hemmed in. You won't get the feeling of life and real color and real shapes. But if you go to classes and you used to do models, you do uh, uh, still lifes. Uh, I used to go to bars and just draw people in bars all night. Uh, the shapes sitting down there. Look at Seth. Right now, there's a work of art. <laughs> See the way he's, he's natural? There's hands down there, the lights, the shadows. All of the way he's casually got his leg crossed, so that's a painting right there. And you, you, got a you got a beer a piece for those, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go to the Caribbean to get great art. You can right around your house the rest of your life. You can find great subjects right around your house. Okay. Is this the is this the end one? Yes. And there she is. What a dear lady. She's dead now. But see that looping down there of the necklace? Very casually done, but you know it's there. You don't want to put a lot of detail in where it's not needed. Art is, a lot of it's perception, a lot of it's fake, a lot of it's smoke and mirrors. What you don't put in is also important. But you'll notice when you squint your eyes, you see those abstract shapes happening up there. OK? I think next up we've got the uh, highly copyrighted Harley Spiral. Oh, but it, we're getting towards that. Show the next one. See those lines coming there? Oddly enough, and this is how it worked out, this uh, painting that I did, these uh, lines actually were part of the painting. Now, if you show the next, not yet. This is the spiral, okay, there, right here, where it radiates out. See all those areas right in there? There, 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 there. And that's what captured my eye, and I didn't know it. Subliminally, I looked at her and I, wow, this is fantastic what I see in front of me. And it turned out subliminally, I was right. I listened to my inner mind. So that's what I did at first. That's a, a tonal drawing. And there's nothing wrong with doing tonal drawings. In fact, most of the great artists in history did tonal drawings. That loosens you up and that gets you prepared for the next step. Okay, what's the next? Okay, here we are. And I'll show you that, that funny looking mannequin. If we can, we won't go there yet, but I'll show you what that is. And it's a, a spiral thing that happens. You see her body, the lower part of the body is faced this way, down this way. The mid part there is faced out that way. Her head is faced that way, and her eyes are faced that way. And I call that, although it's been used for centuries, but I just for 
my students say, I would call that the Har Harley spiral. If you could go back to that um, mannequin, that there. That feeling, the flow of the body turning, 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 and the eyes turning around like that. And if you look at all the great artists in the past, Rembrandt, you name it, Degas, they often, like this, that turn. Now watch what I do. I'll, I'll go against one of those things. I'll have my body this way, my head this way, and my eyes that way. <laughs> Sneaky, <laughs> right? But if I'm looking that way, I'm looking over there at the mountain. So all these little different things, gestures, it's natural. What did you say? You know, you don't go, what did you say? <laughs> Although I've had that happen to me. <laughs> okay, that's the, that's the spiral. Think about that when you're uh, posing a model, not just sitting down there, you know, straight. Okay, what's our next? Uh... Oh, you want, to, uh, do you want me to just jabber on here? Or, or have you got questions? No, talk about this, and then, then we'll go into some images. Okay, this here, does anybody know what that is? A dollar, for anybody who knows what that is. Because I'm afraid somebody will know, and I don't want to make it five. <laughs> What did you say? A birds? Horses? Horses? Oh. What did you say? Ah, oh, you got it. <laughs> Is there somebody else you want to split it with? There's a couple of other people that claim it. Yeah, there's a, there's a claimer up there. Okay, this is the shapes that you'll see in a painting that I did. These are the shapes, and as you notice, they're abstract shapes. Abstract, right? Abstract is based on reality, and you know that. And don't you tell me otherwise, you pastel watercolorist. <laughs> okay, where's the, where's the finished one? See the bottom part there? You were close. That was you said down there, you know, that's good enough. See all those abstract shapes down there? All in down there. He was a great old guy that we met down in, uh, in Mexico on one of our long trips. We'd go down for two, three months at a time and just set up shop and paint. People would come in to the plaza and I'd sit down and we'd paint them. Tom Hill, you know, uh, Bob Kuhn, all sorts of artists. We'd get into these. I, it's so much fun that I can't stand it almost, you know. When I think about it, it's almost unbelievably, and you get paid. They pay you for them, the paintings, when you're finished. That's the ridiculous part. I think and the one before was the tonal version of this also. There's a tone showing that's one tone, another tone, and another tone. Virtually, yeah, virtually three tones there. One, two, three. Virtually three tones. The simpler the tone, the better. Solid, you want solid, okay, with your paintings, not mush. You want the turning of the cheek, you know, the shadows under the eyes, the eyebrows there. And that's an example right there, Sometimes the light actually creeping right through there. You don't always have to put a line right down. You don't always have to put the line down the side of the nose. If it's not there in life, don't put it there, okay, next. There's the one we have uh, hanging upstairs. This is uh, Old Weasel hanging here in the museum. Is he related to Ruth Weasel? No. Well, he may be, but you know, he, uh, uh, but there's such large, they're in whole different parts of the province and there could be distant. Um, but you hadn't seen this painting in... Oh, I haven't seen that. And I have no idea when I made it. 15, uh, 15 years at least, probably. Yeah, when you walked in the museum the other day, you said, oh, I remember doing that one. I do remember doing it, but n not when. And how many pieces have you done since then? Oy. Okay, one. <laughs> a, th a thousand? I'd, okay, I'd say, w w including drawings. Yeah. In, no, it'd be in the thousands. Uh, right, okay. And that's but you remember doing this one? Totally. I remember doing, every, you know, the brain is something, isn't it? Uh, that we, I, I, I saw somebody I hadn't seen for 40, 50 years, 50 years, and the person's 50 years older, 
and recognize that person right away from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Oh, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing that that sinks into your brain and never goes out? So all the drawings that I've done, I, when I see it, oh yeah, I remember doing it, but when I did it, same with this, but I remember all the strokes. I remember the, the, the braid coming down there, doing the feather up there as a kind of a reflection of the braid. Uh, this one, very, very, rather a simple portrait. No, not a lot of feathers, not a lot of beads, you know, very simple, wonderful man. I remember him. I remember the fellow. What's the next one? That's upstairs, the original of that. This is the girl. This one's called Baja Sunset. And this is the last sitting she ever did. Her husband died and she got remarried and her new husband did not want her to pose anymore for anybody ever. So this is her last time she ever posed. And, uh, and it was up, up in Scottsdale at the uh, school. But interesting, see how the background, how I didn't draw a line there. We all know, our, our, the mind's eye can see, can divide know where things start and stop. You don't have to put lines. The hands, how they're intertwined, the fingers. Oh, God, that's fun, I'll tell you. It's a simplify. A lot of things look simple, but they really are not. But they are if you take your time. Every artist I know, as I told you, that measures and, uh, and takes, every artist I know, and there's no exception, that I know. You may know different ones that do different things. Everyone works slower than you think they do. Extremely slow, very ponderously, but with a lot of love in those strokes, you know, just painting away. And it's not picky, it's lapping that brush down or whatever the pastel and working away at it and hacking away at these, this area, then that area, then building out or whatever, however they're doing it. Sometimes in the background, a little bit more, a little more flourish to it, but it's always slower than you think. You were going to ask, when, who was going to ask me when the painting was finished? Was it Jim? Who was it? Uh, it was me. Was it you? Yeah. When is the painting finished? Uh, and here's the answer. It's always finished before you think it is. And there's no exception to that. Uh, anyway. So the, so the saying that uh, one more brush stroke would kill it is really superfluous. You have already killed it. It's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> the one before you thought was the next one would kill it has already killed it. It's no. When it, you start picking away, you say, oh, I better do that. I better fix it. Oh, I better. Every time without exception, when I've walked away and say I'm going to work on this painting and I'll just have something to eat, and I come back to it, I love it. It's finished. It's, it's got a nice, loose feeling to it. The things I was going to do was to correct certain things, you know, fuss around and correct them. Oh, nobody's going to want to see that. Don't think about people when you're painting. Don't think, oh, well, the judge is going to, oh, he's not going to, that's, ooh. nobody's going to buy this thing with that cheek that way. Take a look at some of the, the great fauves, the fauves. Take a look at uh, Marie Cassatt. Take a look at some of the great artists of the past. They did some bravado things. They did some outrageous things. You say, why don't I have the guts to do it? Well, everybody here has the guts to do it. Don't think about the public, don't think about the dealers, don't think about the museums, just think about you and that moment and that painting. And when you feel good about it, and it's always near the end, that's, it's finished. And be damned if people want to tell you otherwise. If somebody says, ah, oh, oh, you're not going to get away with that. You're, you better finish that part off. It's your personal property. In the same way as somebody said, I just don't like the way you talk. I don't like the way you look at me. Well, but that's the way you do it, isn't it? You talk to me the way you want to talk. That's why you should paint the way you want to paint. Raise kids the way you want to raise them. Everybody's got a suggestion or two. Next. Speaking of raising kids. There's uh, Mrs. Black Kettle. This was at the Calgary Stampede. This one's at the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Um, Mrs. Black Kettle and her, her grandchild, who wasn't really that interested in learning how to dance. 
but you can see the, oh, that's my wife's hand. Just kind of, just very quickly because I didn't like the way Mrs. Black Kettle's hand was. It was a little off. So I had Carol go out in the backyard, hold a feather in her hand. No, 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 put it that way. Don't, don't you move now. <laughs> Carol, how many times have I told you? Now, no, no, move. Okay, that, there, that's fine. Now, don't move. I got to run in and get the camera now. <laughs> Hold it, you can see she's holding onto the hand, very loosely done. Feather coming down here. Look at that, a little bit of an angle there. All very loosely done. See, some parts are loose, some parts are tight or tighter. What a wonderful lady. Next. That's Carol's father, a real cowboy. This gentleman was a real live cowboy up in Montana back in the 20s and the 30s. And he used to take uh, mules up into the mining camps. And, uh, and he used to take me along to show me some of the ghost towns that nobody knows where they are and the secrets kept with me, some of the ghost towns up there in the mountains of, of Montana. What a great guy. God bless him. Right, Carol? Bill. Cowboy Bill, we called him. Next. See a sweet face? This is pastel, how the light comes down there, the shadow, those dear old eyes. The hair is done very loosely, but not as quick as you think. You think, oh, you're just about, no. Because you make mistakes. When you do anything fast, you make mistakes. A very loosely done necklace, but it's all you need, right? Do I, should I pick away at that necklace more? Anybody think I should? Do I see a hand up there? Pick away more at the necklace? Everybody agrees? Okay, next. These are drawings, just quick sketches. I do them all the time, compulsively. Since I was in grade, earliest grade school, since I was seven, eight, nine years old, I, instead of learning chemistry and history, I drew continually. And I couldn't stop, it was a compulsion. And, the, and I still do, these old faces. And you can see that I have a natural feeling towards drawing. You get that, everybody can get that if you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. It's just like walking. I, I don't think when I'm walking like this, the mechanics of walking are very complicated, as you know when you're learning to walk. And you know, the hand like that, but you do it without thinking. And I'm jabbering without thinking. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it comes naturally. Jabber, jabber, jabber. But you have a general thought in your head and it pours out. Just like when you have a general, when you have a painting to do, it pours out of you. Have the next one. Oh, this is, I do book covers, magazine covers, and so on. This is one uh, that I did for uh, some Hollywood book. Notice how he's got the gun pointed the other way. Don't worry, I'll get them. <laughs> and I, they, they first they wanted a bathing suit on her, but I thought it was much sexier that way. Don't you agree? Anyway, and that was one of the, uh, that's one of the monsters that I used to do when I was a kid. So I, that came in handy. Okay, next. Sophia Lauren, I did that for a magazine cover. Uh, called Millionaire, and uh, is she not a ravishingly beautiful woman? You have to admit it, it, it's true. And she will be, in her 90s, she'll be ravishingly beautiful. Um, look at that mouth, wow, and those eyes. Everything about her. Okay, Steve McQueen. <laughs> That's for another magazine cover. Um, that's my wife's gun. <laughs> Borrowed for the shot. Harley, did any of these folks pose for you or you did these from well, photographs? This had to be, yes, because they had to be the same person but decades earlier. So, and Steve McQueen at the time was dead. 
and uh, kind of had a pose for life that way. <laughs> but he, you know, what a, an amazing screen presence uh, he was. An amazing screen presence. Now, he did it his way. Watch him in The Great Escape or, you know, the Thomas Crown Affair, Bullet, any of those. What a, what a presence he had and still has. He was cool. <laughs> okay? There's a sitting eagle. Now, he used to, when I was a kid of uh, 12, 14 years old, we used to drive out to Banff, or about 15, 16, out to Banff from Calgary, and he would always be sitting the side of the highway with a, an interpreter, all dressed up, and it'd have a little sign, photographs $1. And he had probably, to me, and I think a lot of other people, the greatest face of a native uh, ever. And he's on the, well, he's, you can see him on the cover of right there. So he, he's a very special spot in my heart I, when I met him as a teenager. And that's half a century ago. Okay. This one here, she's all in shadow. This is the part that's light. And look at how quickly that's done, almost cubistic. But look at just very quickly. The, what intrigued me was the fact that only her foot and, uh, and that part of her dress was in light. And uh, it's just kind of a nice quiet scene that you see all over Mexico. This is in Oaxaca. OK? Oh. This is fakey Harley. Real Harley. Real Harley is a paranoid and a neurotic <laughs> and has insecurities and guilt riddled throughout my body. I'm guilty for everything that ever happened. No, it's not the politicians you think that are responsible for all our ills. It's me. God bless the politicians. What a hearty bunch. I tell you, there's nobody like a politician day after day, how they can put up with what they do. Go to functions, shake hands, be nice, try to do this for the county, do that for the city. I, uh, you know, and they get abused right and left. What a calling. That's why I'm an artist. I'm in my little studio, and I look out into the courtyard, and Carol's got some flowers out there for me to look at, and I listen to music, and... Uh, and I paint a picture, and she says, Harley, let's have a cup of tea, or you want your warm soup? <laughs> Isn't it tough? It's tough. <laughs> but I want to tell you, that wasn't always that easy. <laughs> it all, it wasn't, well, we won't talk about my earlier They can days. buy the book. Yeah. yeah, they can buy it. If you want to read a, a sometimes horror story, including the time that I got in trouble with the law and uh, I wanted Carol to take the rap for me. <laughs> I actually said that to her. I said, please take the rap for me. I had seen it in some James Cagney movie and I thought it was apt. If she didn't take the rap, I'll have to tell you, but it was resolved. What a weasel. <laughs> that, that was the take the rap, please. But this is the one you see in front of you. you know, hi, 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 it's good to see you. Hi, hi. <laughs> uh, actually, I want you to know something. And I'm just glad you asked me this, Seth. <laughs> I'm glad I came today. <laughs> I'm glad you asked me. I am, and, you, and I think some of you will understand this, and it's very true that I am a shy person. I'm a very, very shy person. I am. But like, and, 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 and like an alcoholic, I, I'm an alcoholic, but I quit 30 years ago. But I'm still an alcoholic. I can face people and talk to you because I'm used to it now. But I am basically a shy person. I, when I go to, right now it's okay because in a way, I just get to talk on and on. But at a party where you have to stand there with a, you know, a glass of something in your hand and, oh, it's a, it, it, it talk small talk, you know, about this and that. I'm very uncomfortable with that, very uncomfortable. I like being with my friends and so on, but I'm crushingly shy. And it's always been with me and it will never go away since I was a child. 
And I'm much shyer now than I was when in the middle part of my life, which is a different thing altogether. I, my middle life, my early life, and now this part of my life. Okay, we go on to another. I think that's it. Uh, now, let's, uh, let's have some questions from the audience, if you have any. And uh, I'll repeat them so we get them on the videotape. Who has a question for Harley? Go ahead. You said you love pastel. So your choice, anytime you start picturing something that you want to do, is your picturing yourself painting it in pastel? Or I know you do oils also. Why, why pastel? Why pastel, yes. It's immediate. Grab and hit. There's no fussing around, and I can travel. I don't have to drag and squeeze out this and that. I got 20 pastels. You don't have to have a whole bunch. 20 pastels, piece of paper, subject, grab, you start right away. And you can work on top of it. It's dry. You don't have to wait until this happens or that happens. I love oils. I started with oils. Oils was my only medium when I started out my career. And, uh, but then pastels started to take over. Is that enough of an answer? Well, I'm a pastel. I yeah. Hear and it's gutsy. It's not those fussy little flowers that you used to see. Remember little pansies? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. People think pastels, oh, you do pastels, you must do pansies <laughs> or tulips. Or, or they tell you, well, I don't like light colored paint. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. Clue them in, start a movement. Oh, yeah, you go okay. out and you yeah. see somebody yeah. in the street and yeah. you start to paint them. Yeah. Now, when you complete that in the studio with a larger selection of pastels, or will that be your complete or finished painting? Generally, it's like in a studio, studio setting. Oh, and okay. I'll t you know, right. not, not necessarily in the street, but in a studio setting. I'll leave it. I'm not going to polish it up at all. I'm going to leave it just I as is. That's, That's it. Now, uh, obviously, like the rest of everybody, I also work in photographs, and I take thousands of photographs. Oh, incidentally, <laughs> which reminds me, I'm going to take a shot of you, and I'm going to go over it with a fine-tooth comb <laughs> to see who's got a nice, benevolent look on their face. <laughs> and I'll start with this side. You can. Relax. Okay, are you ready? Okay, I'm going to go over this. I know who you are. Now, no, okay, I want lots of sweetness. You know, this camera actually takes with this little chip, and the chip is this big, big as my thumb. It will take close to 6,000 photographs with one chip. So if you find a good model out of this crowd, you'll have to come back. No question. <laughs> they want to know what it is. Oh, it's um, Olympus uh, Stylus. And it's, you stick it in your pocket. You're walking along. Oh, my God. You know. And it's and a phone, it, too, right? And it's a phone. It's got a, you know, this, and, you know, that, and the other thing, and a, a computer. And incidentally, in with photographs, you shoot first, then ask questions. <laughs> That's better to get forgiveness than permission. Well, it's like your kid. When you're a kid, it, the fun was, is worth the punishment. Sometimes. Harley, are you familiar with George Carlson's work? Is sure am. He's brilliant. Because, you know, this reminds me of the same feeling that George has towards pastel. Thank you. That's a compliment. Uh, George is a great artist. He has really his own unique approach, and it's a very uh, uh, design color, and it's, it's totally unique. His, 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 like, uh, like Cassatt and Degas, and when you see a Carlson, you know that's him, but he's uh, honed that down over the years when he's gone down to, uh, to the, just south of the border into Mexico, and he's done a lot of the people there, and the colors and the trappings and all that that he's put into, and it's a total design within that, the border there, much more than most artists, you know. 
Couple more we got time for. Right oh, here. Oh, you mean I'm just started. <laughs> just come on, ah, come on, Seth. Right. <laughs> Some of these people have to go back to work, uh. especially the ones that work for me. <laughs> Were you inspired by fishing? You're, you're fishing. Mm -hmm. Fishing was a genius. And he worked very slowly. So, so do his contemporaries say. And I saw some of his originals in, uh, in Russia, in his hometown, and while well, in the uh, St. Petersburg at the uh, academy where he uh, studied, and, uh, and many of the, uh, his contemporaries. And this, he is a perfect example of a bravado, but done with accuracy and consciousness of what you're doing at the same time. He's, there's a rep in and uh, Serov and so on. There's many other of the great Russians. Incidentally, those Russians taught their students and their students are teaching now the Chinese people that you see in the magazines, all these different Chinese. It originated from Russian, the Russian school of art. Uh, but Feshin was a, uh, ah, I got a couple of his and I look at them and I look, I've got one drawing of his in the house and I've had it for 25, 30 years. This is the mark of a genius. Every time I look at it, there's something new in it. A simple drawing. They say that brilliance uh, is that the person who's brilliant is not quite sure that they're right, but a genius knows they're right. And that's why you have to be very, uh, and, and geniuses, you know, uh, where do they come from? And I've known some artists that are very dull-witted, not that bright, and yet they can paint such glorious pieces. In the same token, it doesn't matter if somebody's a great raconteur and, and just walks around and talks about their uh, uh, intricacies of life and, and all that, and when they get down. I had one guy, uh, a real blowhard, and he came to the house and he saw that fashion of mine. And he said, ah, that's that academic stuff. Ah, I can do that. And I figured, well, if he can, I'm going to buy everything he does. You know, I was young. I had a little bit of money in the bank, and I figured this guy, I'm going to uh, promote him. And you know, he says, "That's that's that." But I knew that he couldn't. Nobody can. <laughs> it's literally the rarest thing in the world to draw like that. And so I said to him, and he says, "Yeah, that's." And his wife said, "You know, he can." Now he's of the school of many people when they think that uh, they can skip the academic part of art, just go right into abstract. And I have feelings about abstract, incidentally, that people that like abstract, I'm beginning to like them more. Uh, it's not those people that are at fault. Now, don't get mad. <laughs> it's because I feel that people that like abstract see things in there, and if it gives them something, God bless them. There's nothing wrong with them. Some of the best people in the world love contemporary art. Even uh, Damien Hirst, who cuts animals in half and puts them in formaldehyde and sells them for a hundred or for a million dollars a piece. Uh, where, where, where was I? <laughs> formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. No, before the when I got onto the. There's nothing the wrong with cocaine as well. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I had. So I I said, okay, I'm going to give you two thousand American dollars. If you can draw, and I gave him a subject or a photograph, whatever he wanted, and he says, oh. And so, and I had the money laid out there for him, and I said, I want you to draw, a, do a drawing for me, and I want it to be at least, it doesn't even have to be as good as that fashion, but sort of in that line. And I could tell the way he held his pencil. And I'm sure that surgeons, by the way, some surgeon holds his knife. He says, oh God, save the patient. Don't let that guy touch him. And I could tell right away that the way he held that pencil nervously, the way he held it, there was no confidence in him at all. And he started the first line, and I, he was finished. I said, take your time. We'll all leave you. You're here by yourself. I'll give you half an hour. Just a few lines is all I want. And he turned to me, and he said, you know, I didn't know this, but I can't do it. So the first time in his life, he realized that he could not do so-called academic art. You have to go through that. I learned to play jazz, and I played jazz when I was young in various places. But I, I learned the classics first. I learned 
the rudiments. And then I went into the jazz thing, which became natural, very natural for me. And, but I couldn't have done it just sitting down at the piano. And the same with art, the same with music, the same with everything on life. Any other? Does everybody have to go home now? <laughs> let's take, let's ah, take come one on. more, Beverly. <laughs> Beverly. And, and, your, and your music, Portrait, do you also do a wonderful Western landscape? I don't. You're no. There? I know. I know. I have no interest in them. Oh. Inanimate things, I love them, the saguaros and so on, but I, and right, we're on an acreage, and that's the first thing I see is the little hummingbirds and the finches and that, and the trees and the saguaros and all of that wonderful stuff that makes tears, literally tears come down my face at the, at the heaven that I'm living in. And Carol and I say, is this true? Is this really a dream? But it's real. And our five dogs with us in the bed. <laughs> and I wake up, but I can't wait to get into my studio and do a human. Or a dog. I've done many dogs, and I've done... Iguanas. Uh, iguanas. I love iguanas. I love uh, humans. Well, this is in, in various order. Humans, dogs, iguanas, and burrows. I love. But I love humans a little more than <laughs> the others. We need to uh, kind of wrap things up. I want to mention that uh, we do have both of these books, uh, Confessions of a Starving Artist, which is uh, Harley's newest book, and uh, The Eternal Truths for Every Artist. We have that both in uh, hardback and paperback. If we still have any of the hardbacks left, it's now out of print, I understand, a hardback. Of the Eternal Truths. The Eternal Truths. Truths. Yeah. We had the last ten in print, I yeah, understand. In existence, yeah, yeah. So they're gone. Um, and Harley, uh, rather than have you come to the store and sit there while he just scribbles his name in it, has said what he prefers to do is if you would put a little sticky note with your name on it or whoever's name you'd like to have on it, he will take it and overnight tonight, yeah. which you I'll, might be I'll, up all night. I want to take my time and but, really do something. But he wants to do a little, a little something in there yeah. for you, but special. So if you'd like one of these books, get one, get a little sticky note from the store, put your name on it, and uh, Harley's going to be up until about 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. And, <laughs> Not uh, a problem. He's going he's to do something a little nice in the book, um, and you can uh, come back and pick it up whenever here at the store. We'll hold on to them for you. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that's great. And I wanted to mention one thing. Uh, Harley was telling me about a... Uh, a uh, project that he's involved with, the uh, Flying Samaritans. If you're not familiar with this, this is where they fly doctors uh, around the world to help uh, yeah. poor people and underprivileged folks and so on. And this is the lady who was one of the co-founders, and she's still living, is that correct? 97. 97 yeah. years old. Harley did her portrait, and they're selling giclées of this portrait uh, as a fundraiser for that organization. And uh, he has some little pamphlets on that if you'd be interested in uh, finding out a little bit more about that. And, as Harley said earlier, if you're a billionaire, uh, he has a special oh. limited edition of this book <laughs> or, in a giclée slipcase that has a giclée of a painting, comes with two copper plate etchings, and they're framed, and he said he would come to your house and hang them <laughs> for the ultra-low price of only $1,500. Well, I might come to the house, and, you know, the, <laughs> but I'll phone you up and... and, 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 and thank you in person. <laughs> yeah. And thank you yeah. for being such a wonderful person. And, and, and you don't have to be a billionaire... We accept terms. <laughs> <laughs> In the good used sale cars fashion. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. How about a round of applause for Harley?